Okay, I'm going to uh, use the screen record for them so they will be seeing what you guys are seeing. Um, maybe I will turn on the here. Okay, they will look at my iPad. Yeah, uh, like this. Okay, done. Wow. I'm like uh, some futuristic pilot like that. Okay, so we are on waves. So uh, you should be able to recall what we have done. We have played with slinkies and we say that uh, this chapter wave is about energy transfer. And we are talking about energy transfer over a medium or we can also transfer energy through vacuum, like the case of radiation. So I'm going to uh, use a video to uh, help us recall stuff. So um, now I'm going to present a video to you. Okay, let's see. I hope it doesn't jam. Yeah, on your screen, it should be uh, seeing what I'm presented. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, this is a slinky. Uh, it's in slow motion. So uh, what type of wave are we seeing here? You can type it in the chat so that I know you guys can recall. No one, no one is typing anything. Then uh, let's see. Let's get a... Uh, Oh, okay, here comes the responses. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a transverse wave. And as you can see, that uh, the wave is uh, moving away from you. But the vibration of the slinky is in this direction, up and down. So we see that the direction of vibration and the direction of wave motion, they are perpendicular. Okay, so this is transverse wave and I'm transferring energy from one end to another. So let's look at another one, which is this. So this is a slow motion of the longitudinal wave. And as you can see, the energy is being transferred. Uh, now it's bouncing back and now it is going away again. So the direction of the vibration is along the slinky and the energy is transferred along the slinky as well so we say that uh, this is basically a longitudinal wave okay what happened to si Tong? oh any of you didn't see the uh, the slinky video so don't cannot see anything ah. Okay, you know why? Okay, you click on the people tab, right? You look for TSZ. There should be two TSZ now. One is called presenting. You should click on the presenting TSZ. You will be TSZ Choi. Uh, Let me share with you. Uh, I can send this over to uh, WhatsApp, I guess. Okay, let me settle. Okay, besides Si Tong, anyone couldn't see? Uh, it's okay. For those not in the call, I am uh, recording the lesson for them. So it's fine. So anyway, let's carry on. If not, uh, we'll be uh, running out of time. Uh, so basically, what I have just done is that I do a quick revision of you uh, for you on uh, longitudinal wave and uh, transverse wave. But uh, what is interesting about wave is that uh, they don't transfer matter, but they only transfer energy. So how do I know that? Um, let's take a look at this. Uh, let me find the video. Uh, 
Um, I think this one will be cool. So, as you can see, uh, what type of wave am I showing you? L wave or T wave? You can type it in the chat. Yep, very good. This is L wave. And uh, I want you to uh, focus on... Uh, oops, sorry. Let me go back to... I want you to focus on, let's say, this red line. Okay? And then I want you to focus on this concentration of lines, like they are coming together. So you can see that uh, these lines that are coming together, they are moving from left to right. But if you are focusing on the red line over here, you can see that the red line is just oscillating, right? It is moving left, right, but ultimately it is not moving away. Right, it is staying there. It is just that when these lines are moving together as an L wave, it looks like the wave are moving. The wave is moving, right? The compression here is moving, but the individual lines they are just oscillating. So in this case, we say that the wave it only transfer energy because it transfer the kinetic energy from one end to another, but it does not transfer matter. So we can see one more real life example, like uh, here. So this is a swimming pool, uh, water. So uh, it is very crowded in the summer, this is in Japan. So all these people, they are actually swimmer in a giant swimming pool. And uh, why is this swimming pool so popular is because they will generate waves, huge waves. And uh, if you are in it, you will feel the wave crushing through you in a safe way, right? So let's make a hypothesis. Now I have a bunch of matter on a medium, which is water. And later on from the far end over here, they are going to generate a transverse wave. Now, if wave carries both energy and matter, what would we expect to see? Let's uh, ask, uh, how about Brian? What do you think you will, you will see if wave does carry uh, energy and matter? The water is the medium. So the matter we are referring to, we are referring to the swimmer that is on the medium, which is the human being. Yep, okay, so that is one hypothesis. So down here, the water is the medium. So when we refer to the matter, we are not referring to the water. We are referring to the things in the medium. So in this case, the thing that is in the medium is the human being. And like what Brian said, if wave carries matter, then we will see all these people getting washed up towards us. But if wave doesn't carry matter, then we will just see the people just moving up and down. Okay, so let's observe. So you can see down here, near the screen, near the bottom of the screen, you can see that the human are just moving up and down along with the crest of the wave but the human didn't get pushed away, right? It is just moving up and down like how a transverse wave should behave. So this is one important property of wave that it only transfer energy, but the matter that is on the medium will not get trans transfer. So it is like uh, this case, Okay, so in this case, I put a small ball on a, on a sink. Okay, and uh, I'm going to generate wave by uh, disturbing the medium, which is the water. So you can see it is just wobbling. The ball didn't get pushed away. Yeah. So this is the second property of 
matter that uh, of wave that you need to uh, remember uh, I can show you one more I think this one this one is pretty cool so uh, uh, this happens a few years back uh, 2015 when there's a tsunami hitting uh, Indonesia so when the earthquake came uh, Basically, earthquake is also energy being transferred through wave, but then the medium becomes the earth. So this person uh, is in the pool, and you can see that uh, when the wave come, the wave didn't carry him away, but instead oscillate him like up, down, left, right, center. So here comes the wave, and as you can see, uh, he's trying to swim away, uh, but if he decided to just try to float himself uh, he won't be able to go anywhere because uh, w the wave will not carry him away yeah uh, or you can see this um, here you go so uh, if wave does carry matter then this entire bridge will be washed away okay and if you are still not convinced I will show you the pizza okay Basically, the pizza will just be oops, floating, it won't move, it will just go up and down. So uh, you may ask me, teacher, but then uh, when I was, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the beach and then, uh, you know, I'm uh, floating away and then I realized that uh, I got pushed towards the shore, uh, that is due to the tide, it's not due to the wave. So uh, if we are just analyzing wave alone, a wave will not carry matter, it will only carry energy. It, it, I mean, transfer energy. Okay, so next, uh, let's look at our worksheet. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, I still have this. I think this one will also convince you the same thing. Oh, sorry, sorry, not this. This is for later. Okay, so let me toggle back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, as of now, uh, we are just dealing with the basic property of wave. We learned that there are two types of wave, T wave and L wave. Uh, they are characterized by how the medium vibrate um, when the wave travels along. If it is perpendicular, it is T. If it is parallel, it is L. And then uh, we learn from the videos that wave only transfer energy and it does not transfer matter. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is that uh, let's go back to uh, our worksheet. So uh, I'm now going to switch off this camera and uh, you need to go to the people tab and uh, look for and look for Danny Choi, okay? So I'm going to turn on Danny Choi screen, which is my iPad, and then you will see what is happening on my iPad rather than this webcam. Okay, so now please look, uh, pin the uh, Danny Choi screen on your browser, and now I will switch off this webcam and the mic. So let me turn this on. Um, here I go. Oh, 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 my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. Okay, you should see me. Hello, yep, and uh, I'm going to screencast uh, my screen. Are you seeing uh, stuff? You should see the worksheet, which uh, is on my iPad. Um, 
Could you type yes or no if you are seeing my OneNote? Type yes if you are seeing it, type no if you are not. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Oh, okay, 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 okay. The chat doesn't automatically move. Okay, so we are going to fill up the uh, first page, the basic stuff. And then uh, after that, um, we are going to deal with some questions and uh, all. So let's look at page one, let's fill it up together. So uh, now we know that uh, what is a wave? Basically a wave is what we call a phenomenon that transfer energy and it does not transfer matter. So this is our main definition and uh, you would need to memorize that sometimes the test will ask you. And then uh, we know that wave uh, will be categorized into these two, T wave and L wave. When you are defining or explaining uh, what type of wave it is, like uh, for example, they may ask you, they may give you a scenario of a kind of wave and then they will ask you like, uh, can you identify what type of wave it, wave it is? And can you explain your answer? So when they ask you to identify and explain, to explain, you need to focus on the two directions over here. We are talking about the direction of vibration versus the direction of wave motion. So if you look at the uh, direction of vibration and the direction of wave motion, if they are perpendicular, then we say that this type of wave is transverse. So this is actually the explanation on how you identify a wave in your exam. Okay, and you need to know that uh, what are some examples? So an example of transverse wave is your water wave. The other one is what we call your EM wave, electromagnetic wave. Uh, an example of electromagnetic wave could be your light. Okay, so uh, when we go into EM wave, then we will talk about how light is a transverse wave. But for water, I think most of you would agree with me if you disturb the water, the water is going to move up and down and then the energy is going to transverse, uh, transfer, transfer away. Okay, so what are the uh, key descriptor of your transverse wave? Um, you need to always mention the two directions and perpendicular. So I think here, you don't need this, okay? It is kind of redundant. Okay, just memorize this, this point, the example, and the explanation will do. Okay, for L wave, L wave is similar. We are talking about direction of vibration, and we are talking about the direction of wave motion. And to qualify itself as a L wave, they have to be parallel, the directions. Okay, some of you in your exam, you may want to write uh, L wave are uh, wave whereby the vibration is parallel to the wave motion. This will give you zero mark. You cannot say vibration is parallel to wave motion. There are a lot of property of vibration. For example, frequency of vibration, uh, magnitude of vibration, direction of vibration. So you need to be very specific and let me know that you are focusing on directions. Okay. So I warn you already, huh? in your, now you don't have media exam, meaning that whether you promote or fail or retain depends on your end of year. Okay. Even your term test is canceled now. So it is kind of scary. Okay. So down here, example is just your sound wave. In your syllabus, there's only one Example of L wave. Can? Then down here, this one I need you to study on your own because you just need to read it. It's just some definitions. So uh, let's talk about the units first. So all this parameter is how we are going to describe our waves. 
okay for example direction of wave amplitude of wave wavelength of wave frequency of wave all these are how we describe waves uh, is similar to temperature is similar to you know uh, height weight velocity acceleration all these are just parameter so you need to know is uh, SI unit frequency is in Hertz frequency is actually something very easy to understand it just means that how many wave is produced in one second okay so um, how many wave is produced in one second look no? here okay then uh, wavelength uh, is measured in meter because it is wave length right so anything to do with length it is in meter so what is wavelength well it is just one crest to another crest Okay, this word over here, if you do not know what it means, it means that in a transverse wave, in a T wave, the peak here, this thing is called a crest. Okay, you guys go and find out what do you call the minimum point. Okay. Then after that, you will have your period. Okay, period, it means that the time taken to generate one wave and since we and this is basically just time taken oh sorry i write the wrong thing this is just the time taken it means that it must be seconds therefore like that yeah last one would be your amplitude and uh, amplitude is just a measure of height Okay, but there is something uh, uh, interesting. Amplitude will indicate to you the amount of energy carried by a wave. So imagine if you, uh, you are a big person and then you jump into the pool, right? The wave that you created will be very tall compared to if you kick um, Jamie into the pool. Jamie is a small person. So when he drops into the pool, the wave is very tiny, right? So... Um, the height of the wave, we call it amplitude, refers to the amount of energy generated. And remember when we play Slinky, the amplitude, this one, the amount of energy carried by the wave, does it affect the speed of wave? Yes or no? Come, chat chat. Okay, you guys are still surviving. So good. Yep. And the answer is no. Okay. So for uh, for this chapter, basically, all the all this thing over here uh, will form two equations. So just now we learned that um, your frequency is just the number of wave generated in one second, right? So if I generate F number of wave in one second, can I find out how many wave, for example, if I want to generate one wave, how much time is taken? I can, right? If I want to generate one wave, then the time taken for this will be one divided by F. Am I right? And I know that the time taken to generate one wave is the definition of period. So we know that this can be formed. So your first formula for this chapter is actually period is actually equals to one over F or you can also call it frequency is one over T. So they are related. The other formula that you will need to use extensively in this chapter will be the speed. V stands for velocity, which is <coughs> speed with a direction. It's actually equals to the frequency of the wave multiplied by the wavelength. You can also find the speed by using the distance time time formula. It is fine. Okay, 
So we are going to practice uh, using this few formula in the second lesson. Today we will just focus on building our conceptual understanding to wave. Yeah? Okay. Now let's look at uh, this thing over here. <clears throat> yeah? Um, let me toggle into this and uh, let's go to wave. Um, no end, uh, oxalate, too fast. Yep. So, this is a wave. Uh, it is appearing quite choppy on your... How about now? Still very choppy, yeah? but better, right? So, as you can see, as the wave go along, the green balls will not move left and right. It is just oscillating up and down. So, uh, just to share with you, like, for example, if I increase my frequency, as you can see, I am generating way more waves in one second, right? So now if I look at the uh, frequency reading, I will see 2.07 Hertz. What does that mean? It means that in one second, how many waves will I generate? 2.07. Yeah, I can even up it a little bit to 2.44. So now it means that will be 2.44 wave generated in one second. Right, this amplitude down here will change the amount of energy I am transferring in the wave. Yeah, so you can see that the speed of the crest moving away is similar. Can you see? You focus on how fast the crest is, the, the peak, how fast the peak is moving away. Even if I change the amplitude, the peak, the speed at which the peak move away is about the same. So let's see. Uh, let's move this. So let's focus on the first peak. Oops, sorry. Let's focus on the first peak. I will measure the time when the first peak is being generated and that peak move out of the window. Okay. Three, two, go. Okay, so it's about 1.16. Now I will increase the amplitude and I will measure the time when the first peak is generated until that peak moves out of the window. Go! Oh, I missed it. Go! Eight, eight, eight. So it is about the same, about one point something. That is due to my fat fingers unable to press the right button. Okay, so down here, what I'm trying to convince you is that two points, uh, the medium, which is now the balls, they are only vibrating up and down. It does not get carried away by the wave. Number two, the amplitude will not affect my speed. And uh, number three, the meaning of frequency is just the number of waves made in one second. Okay. And uh, now I see the chat uh, from Zhiwei. Yep, you are right. I think I make a blunder there. Uh, yep, down here, sorry. <laughs> it's a uh, distance equal to speed time time. Thanks. Okay, so uh, how would uh, O-Level ask you? Um, for example, they will ask you something like that. They will give you a scenario. In this case, the uh, string vibrating out of the window. And then they will ask you what kind of wave it is and ask you why. Why is it a transverse wave? So to answer that, you need to identify two directions. Number one is your direction of vibration. So you can see that the bulb is just vibrating up and down along this line. So this is the blue line that I'm drawing. This is the direction of vibration is 
perpendicular to the direction of wave motion. So some of you may be asking me, what is wave motion? Why do you keep using this word? Wave motion refer to the crest. You can see that this crest, right, will move along this thing. Right, it will move like that. And after that, it will move here, it will move here. So the crest will just move along this line. You can see? If not, you look at this. Focus on the peak. The peak is moving left to right and out of the window. So when you look at the peak, that is the wave motion that I'm referring to. Okay, and this, this line, the first line that you have written now, will explain why is this transverse. Next thing you need to explain is, why is this a wave? So why is this a wave? Because it only transfer energy and it does not transfer matter. Okay. Okay, I will just finish up my lesson until question four and then we will take a break. Okay, and then that's it. We will continue tomorrow. So the other thing you need to know is what is considered as complete wave. Complete wave is either from the peak to another peak. So it will look like this. So this is how a peak, one wavelength look like. So this is one wavelength. Or you can look at it from the point of bottom to bottom. Or you can look at it like that. So all these are different methods of counting waves. So for example, if I look at this, how many waves am I showing on this diagram? I will see that there's one wave here. So I'm using the bottom to bottom method to identify. So one wave, two wave, three wave, three and a half wave. Okay, and then there's a bit more which I can't count. So that's how you can count wave. So if now I tell you that, oh, okay, uh, this three wave is produced in uh, 12 seconds. Three wave produced in 12 seconds. What would be the period? Period refers to the time taken to make one wave, right? So three wave took 12 seconds. Period refers to the time taken to make one wave. So it will be? Four seconds, huh? Yeah? So down here, uh, it is just your understanding on frequency and wave. Four hertz means that there is four complete wave made uh, a form in one second. A period of 10, it means that it takes 10 seconds to form one complete wave can so today just to recap we talk about the nature of wave uh, that it transfer energy and not matter we also talk about how to identify t wave and l wave and then after that we i show you a example on t wave in greater details yeah then we try one o level question and then after that, we learn how to uh, identify a complete wave, either from peak to peak, bottom to bottom. By the way, uh, all these peak to peak, bottom to bottom in exam, you cannot use. You have to call it crash and the other word you're going to find out. Okay, Or you can find from the undisturbed position, one, two, three. So between three undisturbed position, that will also form one complete wave. Yeah. So tomorrow I will see you at about the same time, but uh, we will skip the attendance taking. Um, then we will look at a longitudinal wave and uh, we will do a quick summary and then we will try some questions on calculations. Okay. And uh, any question, you can now turn on the mic and uh, ask questions if you like or if you want, you can type.
Anyone with questions? Okay, if not, then uh, that's it. I think that's the end of your first day of HPL. And bye-bye. Uh, I will send you a survey link so that I know how you feel about all this. Okay? So see you tomorrow at about the same time. And uh, uh, any one of you interested in toys? Okay, if you are interested, I can show you my toy cabinet. Uh, but otherwise, then uh, that is the end. Oh, I have a question. What does V means in V equals to F squarely? Okay, the V stands for um, velocity. So velocity is basically speed. So you can take it as speed, speed of the wave. So the V stands for speed of wave. And the F stands for frequency. That thing that you couldn't type it out is called Namda. It looks like the Chinese character Ru, and that stands for wavelength. And where's my dog? I thought she's around. Okay, any other question? Yeah, okay, I, I will show you my cool collection. Uh, oh, what am I showing? Uh, Oh, my computer jam. Okay, anyway. <laughs> yep. Uh, these are my toys. Uh, you can tell what kind of fan I am. I am into Dragon Ball. Just make this cool looking dragon. And the time machine. And uh, my Final Fantasy collection and then uh, some Naruto stuff uh, yep, I paint this and then the rest is just Dragon Balls yeah okay so I'm a Dragon Ball fan and that's it Okay. And uh, I can show you my dog as well. Let me call him. Sande! Sande! Yeah? Auntie and Uncle want to see you. Say hi. Yeah. Okay, that's my dog. He's sleeping and then his bone is here. Say hello. And then why are you so gloomy? Because you got stay home notice, right? You cannot go out. Lovely dog. Okay. Yep, that's the end and uh, I will see you tomorrow. And uh, yep, goodbye. Yeah, this is super cute. I like this too. Okay, bye 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 bye. Ah yeah.